welcome to my channel welcome to well um this may be a mishmash i have had to leave my recording area um i'm hoping the wind is not going to buff up my mic grab your cuppas and whatever you're working on and for now i'm going to be stitching sorry not stitching i'm knitting because I couldn't record indoors and then, geez, I got followed outside by the, f mm, anyway, so I'm a little frustrated. Um, I have one day to record and I do enjoy my lie-in and I couldn't even get on with things then when I did get up and it's just like, ah, yeah, and then I can't even express my frustration. Which is equally frustrating. Um, so yeah, it's okay for uh, nothing to happen as a result. Grumble, grumble, grumble. All right. Um, now, <laughs> I don't know if this is really going to work. I ended up running out of color yesterday. Uh, two, two rows short. So I've put in the new colour and it's vastly different. I don't know if it's going to look like a dog's dinner. As a result, I'll go a few rows and see. It could look like a dog's dinner. And I might have to just trim it by two rows, then put the colour change in and go from there as I would have if I'd got it into the right place. I don't know why I ran out of the colour. Um, I'm slightly bemused seeing as they would have measured it I don't know did I use it in the wrong place somewhere or what so yeah um, I'll try and sit back sitting up is um, I'm not actually doing my back any favours um, so yeah first week back at work five days five hours a week a day um, was okay I um, had one day where I was um, rapidly moved from one role into another and um, it was a little bit more active, you know, up and down from seating to standing and that kind of carry on. So my back was a little bit achy from that, uh, back as in core, middle kind of thing. I think I walked on uh, day one. Day two, I did a half walk. And day three, I didn't walk because it was 29 degrees at one o'clock in the afternoon. You know, peak of the day. Um, 29, I think, is up in the 80s. Um, so, yeah, hot. So, um yeah, didn't walk on those extremely hot days. And then the Friday I had to go back to my GP and he's pleased with my progress. Work are not pushing me to resume eight hours or anything like that. And I think I need to have a few more of those kind of alternate days um, where I'm doing the kind of jumping up and down kind of a bit more and that will really kind of build up my stamina and let me know that I'm either okay or not okay so um, yeah we'll um, just bide our time no I'm not liking that I don't know if you can see the colors oops there goes my green yarn I've got one red stripe but then I've got the two green blue stripes and then it goes back into the red, alternating with the green stripe. Yeah, I'm going to take it out. Um, okay, so... I'll see if I can do this on camera. If this is not going to work because my brain goes into a complete meltdown, then so be it. I'll stop recording and just fix this. Um, I did get lace needles though and 
they are heaps better. Okay, so that's the green, that's the, oops, the white. You know what? This little duvalaki here, this came from Paisley Pearl, um, from Rachel at Paisley Pearl, and if I can't, I looked actually in my spotlight store, and I could not find what this is. It doesn't, sorry, it does say what it is. It says it's a Susan Bates needle. So it's a spike crochet hook at one end, um, lace needle point on the other. <laughs> Holy cow, it has got me out of so many pickles. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. Now, if I can get this... Have I done? I didn't knot this. I don't knot my knitting. Gee, um, something's not happy in here. I tried doing a weave in. Um, End, and I think maybe it's twisted and just got that little bit tight on the corner. So I was trying to find the corner and couldn't. There we go. Okay. Because I don't want to unravel anything that I actually need. Right. So there's the red, and the red is called Fox which is the um, phoenix, which is um, potentially Dumbledore's Patronus. Um, I can't remember if I'm imagining that or not. Um, now this is going to be tricky because I've got um, oh gosh I've got a slip loops in here as well so I will do my best but the first line of knitting is actually going to tell the better tale and I just need to get those slips in to the right place um, yeah so work has been a I suppose the bigger focus, um, the heat has been uh, interesting, let's just say. Uh, we did go for a walk yesterday. I think we thought it was going to be raining earlier. So the walk we chose, I chose, um, is called Lake Dobson, which is in the National Park territory in the middle of the state well it's an hour away um, in the middle um, it's a place that is at 64 meters sorry 64 meters 640 meters um, elevation I don't know what that is in feet um, it gets snow in the winter time no snow obviously at the moment there are ski fields up there Hello, um, this is my insert for my whip and chat where I was at, I'm in the middle of, on the video, um, knitting on the deck. So I thought I would um, include the photos from our walk, which was at Lake Dobson, which is in the middle of National Park in Tasmania. So I'm gonna be playing those pictures over my very boring view of a keyboard and you've got me and I've got a cover. So, one of the first bits that we came to was a, a view out over the valley. It didn't actually say what the view was, but it just showed the view. But there was a bit of a description, and I did talk about it, I think, on the knitting, that the road was created back in the 1800s during the Depression era as a job for the, um, the guys who were working on it. 
Um, there were certain bits of this walk or the wilderness that they were in that they would step on a horizontal branch it was called intricate undergrowth or something um, they would step on a horizontal branch that was rotten and they'd fall through to the ground meters below so um, it was a bit of a minefield for them back then and that was um, uh, you know quite a while ago then there's also the things like the brambles and the things that will scratch you and then the things that will eat you and all of that kind of thing. It's like, yeah, Australia, it's, it's out to get you. Um, so there's a couple of shots of the views. Now there are a bit of a mixture in these views. Some are mine and some are Marcus's. So I will just drop them in as we're chatting. So the road from National Park up to Lake Dobson is 16 kilometers long. It takes about half an hour to drive because you're going at mm, roughly 40 kilometers an hour all the way up. It does get snow in the middle of winter, so all the markers are orange as you head. Um, there is a walk down the bottom, which we will actually get back to doing. It's called Tall Trees Walk, and these trees are like straight up and they're, you know, colossal beasts. So um, you'll get some of those too. But there was a fallen tree at one of the parking bits that we stopped at. And um, it was a really dark red bark. Um, Marcus had said that it was dead. It was detached. But it still had that rich red colour. And we don't know if it's um, that it was up in the crown of the tree that it's dark. Or whether or not it... Um, uh, it's a red gum but you couldn't see down on the ground what color it might have been so not quite sure how um, the name of the tree might relate but I took some pictures of the pandinis and the, then there's this little thing which is a little spiky bush because there's lots and lots of these but that, it was pretty much for me when we got to Lake Dobson just about textures I think um, on this walk, the walk around Lake Dobson, I think, is four kilometres, maybe, at a push. Um, so it's boardwalk most of the way around, or gravel. It's a single file track. There is a toilet block there. I was very tempted to, to take a picture of the compost um, long drop toilet, but I decided not to. Um, but... Um, so there's a long drop toilet and then there was a big kind of uh, gathering shed shelter kind of place um, and then it's the boardwalks and there was a couple of other buildings around the lake there was two on the lake or there was one on this lake and then there was one on the next pond that was just north um, or actually to the west but this lake actually can freeze over and the whole place is just covered in snow. Um, so yeah, uh, it was quite nice being up in the summer. Marcus hadn't been there from what he could remember for a war ever. Um, so it was all very new for him. So it was um, interesting. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so there is a ski resort there. Yeah, he didn't remember. Um, having been there um but yeah for me yeah all about the textures there is this tree in particular is called a pencil pine um now i'm not sure if pencil pine is actually used for anything in particular um there is possibly a picture yeah further back um with the celery top pine and the leaves on this pine uh, it's a soft wood. Um, the leaves on this actually um, look like celery leaves, uh, hence the name celery top pine. But the pencil pine, I'm not so sure of. They've got these finger-like chubby fronds um, in their lush bright green in the stage that we were, you know, eye level with. But the trees themselves don't seem to be particularly big. Um, you know, and then they've, yeah, they've just got this odd foliage. So um, there's not many trees in Tassie that I can identify. So I'll take whatever name tags that they give, to be honest. Um, I'm just going to open up my photos a little bit bigger. 
the Pandani, Pan, sorry, Pandani, Pandan, yes, Pandani, P-A-N-D-A-N-I, Pandani Grove. They're like, um, they're like weird palm trees, to be honest. Um, they're kind of like a yucca plant, um, if that makes any sense. You've probably grown yucca plants in the office, but these things are, well, I'll let the photos speak for themselves. They're like shaggy old men. They've got these twisty, um, curly, um, brown hair down the body of it and then they've got this lush green top like a pineapple kind of top only you we were oh. looking at photos of marcus yesterday when he had the beard at the end of the six month growth and it was all the floof um he washed no maybe he didn't wash it especially before the kids cut it off him but the photos that we got were quite funny um, but the Pandani, Marcus has got a video here, so I'll play all that as we go through. You can hear maybe some of the bird song as well, if it's appropriate. If it's not, if it's kids being yelled at or the background hammering from um, one of the sheds being worked on. Um, I'll just put in some pretty music, so. Um, but I do get some shots of the curly brown. It is actually quite rigid. Um, yeah, so it was like... It looked like you were petting hair, but it was hard, brittle, brown um, fronds. Very, very weird. It is probably about as much as I can say. Very, very weird. Um, then we've got some of the trees underwater that have literally just fallen into the lake and been left there. So you've got these horizontal trees. Um, and then there were some berries. Don't know what they are. I don't know if I could eat them or not. Didn't try. Um, there are such a thing called a wild cherry, which looks like it's... Um, it looks like... Uh, you know how the olives have um, a piece of cheese or pimento or something red sticking through them they, they kind of look like those but you eat the red bit and you don't eat the nutty bit um so that's the theory behind those and i found that out because somebody had asked on the local flora facebook group what it was and they said oh yeah and you can eat them but some people said they're disgusting um so all the envy with these pandanis of the curly locks like sophie has curly locks like the pandanis it was just really really weird like little ringlets um, through the, the bottoms. Um, did find a little waterfall. It was two foot high <laughs> waterfall. Um, more berries, more lichen. There's lichen everywhere. There's moss everywhere. The pandanis were just ugh, incredible though. Um, not much flower um, on this walk, uh, but the lake it's not a huge lake at all. Um, most of it does freeze in the winter. You couldn't ski on it or skate, sorry, not ski on it, skate on it. I don't think they don't use it for skating as far as I know. I don't recall anyone ever going ice skating up here. Um, sorry? Yeah, it is a bit of a drive for skating. But they have a skating rink, supposedly, up the top of Mount Wellington. It's like two foot by two foot. It's Okay, it's not quite two foot, it's probably more like ten foot by ten foot. It's tiny. It's like you start skating and you fall off the other side kind of thing. The only reason I found it was because there was a geocache there. Um, again, more about the textures with the weird tree trunks on rocks and pandani, the bright green out of the brown and, um, and things like that. And I might not actually have these photos in any particular spot worth that I'm talking about so bear with me um and then there were some weird ones they were like they'd lost their curly um their curly ringlets and they just looked like they had been shredded now they quite possibly have been shredded by possums or wallabies um so they look like they're soft brown fur rather than the ringlets, if that makes um, some sense to you. Probably make more sense when you see the pictures. Um, and then there was a couple of skeletal looking um, trees that just, you know, they die and the tree still stays up, but it goes this ghostly white. Um, 
some lichens, more lichens as usual, and then videos. So uh, the videos will go in and as I say, if I've got sound, you'll get sound. There was an incident when we went to the cafe after lunch, it was called the Possum Shed, and we had some gorgeous food in there, surprisingly. There was a skink that I was telling you about in the photos. I think Marcus tried to get it on video and I'm not sure how clear it's going to be. A skink is um, 10, oh no, probably about 15 centimeters long. It's a metallic brown kind of color, if anything. And it caught a fly the size of its head. So I'm not sure if it will come out. You might just see the thing darting across the bottom of the doorway. Um, if it's any good, if I'll um, put it in. But that's a bit of a run through from the walk that we had. Um, and I will throw you back to the other video. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking aloud and wondering about these giveaways that I'm going to do. Um, I have been very slack and I apologize. I haven't got my head in gear. I think I'm going to do specific videos and throw them in to other videos. So stay posted on that one. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy the walk and I will see you in the rest of the video. Bye. Um, it was really nice. Marcus hadn't actually been on this walk before, which surprised me because he's local. Um, you can run the gauntlet. So there's different bits. They actually, um, I don't know if in the US during the depression they did uh, a kind of job scheme. But in Ireland they did um, this kind of employment scheme back in the famine era over in the west of Ireland where they actually had the poor people paid by the landowners to build stone walls. So hence the stone walls all over the west of Ireland, um, you know, lining out the fields. Basically what they did was they would pick up the stones from within the field and they would build into uh, stone walls around the edge. And that was during the famine time just to give them employment um, and worth and all of that kind of thing. So one of the things that they did in Tasmania was uh, in 1826, I think it might have been. I don't know if I took a picture of the picture. Um, but anyway, back in the Depression, 26 sounds a bit early, it might have been 1840, because I don't think it was the 90s. Anyway, they built the road up to Lake Dobson, so you can actually drive all the way up. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have access to this little gem in the middle of nothing. Um, well, no, I don't think we would. Um, it actually takes you through the different levels of uh, rainforest it um, it takes you um, up to the alpine plateau and um, yeah you just keep going from there it's it's um, 
it's really kind of cool um, so yeah this was a depression thing apparently when they went up there and created this walk the explorers would um, step on trees as you do when you're you know clambering through um, anything that's overgrown well the problem was that if you stood on one of these horizontal branches they actually called it um, uh, there was a particular name um, intricate I think is what they called it um, and when you stepped on this intricate thing um, if the um, tree was rotten you would you know crash down through the top branch and you could fall quite a distance down to the ground so uh, yeah and then of course there's the whole um, leeches and snakes and spiders that were spiders were everywhere on the walk yesterday um, they all seem to be the same spider and they all had this kind of um, craggy back end like you know spikes um, like a crab kind of um, finish on its back end so I don't know if they're I think it might just be a, like an orb kind of thing I don't think they were necessarily um, a spider that would bite and kill you or anything um, but there was just lots of spider activity in saying that we do have the redback spider which is dangerous and uh, yeah they're ones that you really do not want to play with okay so that's back on you're being a bit whiny Sophie go away last one Let's see if we can get this one going. All right. Now I'm going to do a naughty. I'm going to cross my legs because it's a bit more comfortable. Uh, now this end I have to weave in, and this end I'm going to knit two rows, keep with the color, and then go into the red. We'll wing it, and hopefully it'll work. Hopefully I haven't dropped too many stitches, and I see as I go where we are going All right. without the breeze here it's actually quite warm uh, and I'm in the shade no my arm is not okay that would explain why it's getting a little toasty okay. and I'm gonna need my hook to try and grab these stitches that I was careless enough to lose uh, this is not one of the joys of knitting taking stitches off and putting them back on Anywho. yes today is, is one of those days so anyway um yeah the walk was The walk was really nice, it was a beautiful day. Um, sorry, I need to flick you. Uh, it was a beautiful day. There wasn't anyone else on the walk we were doing, which was nice. So we had this little trail pretty much to ourselves. There was a working party up at one of the huts. Um, I don't know if you can stay in these huts. It would be really cool if you could. Um, or maybe you have to be a skier or something but um, yeah there was a work party at one of the huts painting and hammering and making a colossal noise and uh, I hope you're just a fly then um, we went down into a little town called Westerway um, I say town there's um, a fish and chip shop I'm not sure if it's still open the sign is on the window there is a cafe called the possum shed there is a raspberry farm 
There may be a primary school. I think that's about it. And then there's a couple of houses. One of the rivers goes right through it. A little kind of um, babbling brook, for want of a better term. Um, it's a narrow kind of river, but it goes over rocks and makes lots of noise and all that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, we stopped at the possum shed on the way back. And I also wanted to stop at the raspberry farm to get some berries because Sophie is a massive, massive berry fan. And um, Marcus was kind of humming and hawing about whether or not to go to the possum shed. He really fancied a beer at the end of his walk. If we had beer with us, we would have been able to bring it ourselves. But we didn't know, so we didn't. Um, I think that's him washing the car down from the dirt. Um, so we went to the possum shed after checking out the menu, checking out alternatives. Oh, I found that um, my phone coverage is really crap uh, because of the service that I've moved to. So I'm going to be contacting another service or contacting my original service and saying, get me back because this is bullshit. I need to have the service. So he actually had better phone reception than me and that's, look, yeah. Anyway, trying to get the most effective, but still um, not be completely ripped off. Um, yeah. So we um, had a gorgeous lunch in the possum shed. Like we were looking at the pancake restaurant, which was nearby-ish, and decided, no, we'll go for the possum shed. And it was saying like it was coffee, iced chocolates, teas, um, some savoury stuff and some cakes and we went in and we decided that we would share a now it was called a BLT but this was actually a bacon lettuce no was it? yes there was lettuce bacon lettuce tomato and turkey and cheese there was brie um, all in a Turkish bread God, it was delicious. We really enjoyed it. And then we also shared what's called a Devonshire tea um, or scones. He calls them scones. I keep berating him. If you're in England, it's a scone. If you're in Australia, I don't know how the hell it became a scone, but it's a scone. All kinds of wrong. They've, they were scones in my home. <laughs> so they're going to stay scones in my home. Uh, so we had scones with jam and cream. And then we got to watch a skink. Now, a skink is approximately the size of my needle to there, you know, hand size. They're, they're the width of my finger, excuse fingers. Um, they're the width of my finger. They're, um, they're called metallic skinks. They're actually a kind of shiny brown, brown black little lizard. They're tiny and they're very, very fast and they will lie basking in the sun um, during the day. Oh, what am I? Okay. Right. So the, um, the skink had come in and was running around the windowsill much to our amusement and there was a fly bumbling around the windowsill as well and the skink managed to pounce on the fly which was probably as big as its head um, and uh, catch the fly and then it um, it sat there with this big fly in its mouth you know as big as its head and figured out that it was going to then scramble down the wall like the window was table height so it was going to scramble down the wall with the fly in its mouth now somehow or other it dropped the fly but the fly was so stunned that it just stay there well the, the skink ran out the door gap and then came in again a few minutes later but it gave heaps of enjoyment to Sophie who was going you know bly 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 um, as she does 
um, with flies and uh, yeah but it was quite incredible watching this skink in action um, yeah, that was a bit of a highlight so that was in the sunny window and we told the cafe girls you know we were all busy watching a skink while we had our lunch and Sophie had baked beans which was a, an extortionate amount of money for a plate of baked beans but she did a good job on that and she ate the scone we gave her a piece of scone and she had some raspberry lemonade um, and her sister had sausage roll so it was a gorgeous lunch um, for you know very fair um, money apart from the beans um, but yeah it was, it was really really yummy um, came home and made pizza later um, and uh, stayed in the cool or tried to stay in the cool and then watched another um, Jurassic Park movie last night in 4k and it was like oh my gosh the clarity was just incredible um, like Marcus was saying it was like watching a movie in the cinema so I wouldn't know yes I haven't been brought to the cinema and then of course COVID last year stopped anyone going to the cinema so <laughs> yeah um, it's not cheap going out um, it's okay when it's just one but it's like 20 bucks per person um, easily to go out and if you're going to make an item of it of course you're going to have food and it's going to be even more and yeah um Marcus doesn't go out much. Um, he, when we first started dating, we did um, because you know that's what you do. He couldn't afford it, and neither could I. <laughs> yeah, and my previous instalment, he just stick it on the credit card and I don't know, put it on the never never. So that wasn't good either. So living within a budget means that we don't tend to um, go out too often. But we do really good food. Like I was sitting looking at this menu yesterday at the possum shed, going, I need to pick something that we don't have at home. What is something that we don't ordinarily have that I'm going to enjoy that's going to be a treat? So we were looking at the toss up between this BLT thing, which was more than it actually described it as, or there was another kind of it wasn't a, was it a sandwich I can't think but there was something else that you know we were tossing up between um, and, and I, you know it was the whole point of you know going out like why would you go out to have food that you would oh hamburger I think was the other thing I was looking at but Friday nights are hamburger night um, so yeah why would you go out to eat something that you can make or you do already make um, each week so um, yeah there's that kind of um, mentality I guess it, I think it's a healthy mentality but it's that mentality I think as much as anything that um, you know if there's something in particular um, we like we either figure out how to make it or, um, well, not that we don't have it, but we figure out how to make it. So, poutine, for instance, if you haven't seen the poutine video, go check it out. I tried poutine last week. I was down getting my nails done in the afternoon, and the Canadian restaurant does takeaway after 5 p.m. So, I got poutine. First time ever having poutine. And I get the whole chips and gravy idea, okay? Um, I'm not a big fan of chips and gravy. Australia does chips and gravy. Not a, not a fan whatsoever. The poutine I was willing to give to, as um, a choice or a challenge. And I had seriously no idea what to expect from cheese curds. Well, holy cow. The... Cheese curds look like 
um, mini little mozzarellas. Now I only call them mini mozzarellas from the look, not from the taste or anything else. So they look like these little off-white 3865 balls of putty. Okay, and I put the first one in my mouth and I chewed it and it squeaked against my teeth. <laughs> it was just like, oh my god, this is... <sighs> yeah, I know, like, thrill a minute for the kid in the back seat, kind of. Oh, god, it was hilarious. So I'm, I'm sitting there trying to... So I had one mouthful before I hit record. And, uh, yeah, then I hit record and you got the rest of it. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it was so much fun. I seriously, I, I don't know, I didn't stop giggling as I was eating this stuff. The gravy that they did, I think, was like a, a chicken gravy. It wasn't, um, it wasn't overly strong. Like, we do real gravies with our roasts every week. So we use the dripping, and we use flour, and we cook it on the stove, and you, we throw in... Um, red wine and onion at the beginning of the meat process there's the seasoning on the meat it all drips down it's so good so it tasted more like a chicken gravy it was a light gravy no there was not enough gravy it was in a cardboard box with a paper liner it really should have been in a plastic actually it really should have been on a plate to be honest um but uh had it i have tried finding out if i can get poutine there is a company on the mainland that sell it but they only sell it wholesale i might have to contact them and ask them who to get it through down here because i did ask one of our meat wholesalers and they said that they don't stock it um if i can get it frozen we are freaking laughing. I will be having poutine with the leftover gravy <laughs> nearly every week. Oh my God, as if I need chips um, on a weekly basis. Um, but it would be great for a winter kind of, I don't know, winter snack or something. Um, just to be able to kind of go, okay, I'm going to take some curds out of the freezer. I'm going to throw them on the piping hot gravy, as you guys have told me it needs to be piping hot gravy so that the cheese melts um, maybe even pop the curds under the grill or even with the heat gun and give the get them a little bit more melty and um, have it like it should be <laughs> yeah um, if I can get the curds now I did also see I got a web page of um, a Canadian who has made their own cheese curds and the recipe calls for something Hello, like Mommy. hello sophie sophie's here um the recipe calls for four liters of milk if you use homogenized milk you need to get a calcium carbonate i think it might be um but i can get non-homogenized milk um, in certain places and uh what else did you need you needed a rennet Money what's what that's daddy. Oh, daddy you need to get shoes on if you're going to go down and have a look so oh, yeah. it is possible and that's you basically then that. just simmer it I think rather than boil but you simmer it on the stove and then eventually it will separate and you end up with the curds and whey um, now I have never tried making cheese I have a friend who has, he's actually a pharmacist, um, and he's made, um, I think Gorgonzola might have been one of his early cheeses, um, and he said it was just amazing. So I know it's not impossible to make, um, it's just whether or not I do the rookie thing follow the instructions, can get my hands on the rennet, or if I maybe can find one of our local cheese companies who will sell me um, non-goat's curds, 
because I don't want goat curd. Goat is just stinky. Um, so yeah, goat's just too strong a flavour. So I'll see how I go. I'll keep you posted. And um, yeah, well, it's the kind of thing that his nibs would endorse. So, um, yeah, that would, look, it'd be a lot of fun. It'd be a challenge and we only have to make it once and then we've potentially got it for a lot, you know, for a long time because it would be frozen. Um, just like we did with, um, our, um, we bought prawns for our pizza. We bought a kilo of prawns. I think it is. Uh, it will last. Actually, no, they're not prawns. They're shrimp because they're tiny. Um, we will use them sparingly on the pizza. I think there's three pieces on mine, three pieces on his, and maybe three pieces between the kids. Um, so it will last, you know, a fair tick. Um, and that's kind of what we do with that. So, yeah, if we can... Oops, I didn't want to knit that. I need to swap and purl and... Yep, okay. I'm getting there. I do love this scarf, uh, shawl thing. It is a pleasure to learn the new stitches, seriously. And the wool feels nice. It's um, it's actually quite a thin wool. Um, if you like, it's not a double weight. It's a sock weight, I suppose. Um, I I don't know how the um, designer. It's forbidden fiber. Um, I don't know how the designer actually describes it. Okay, now so. Now I'm up to where this color should be. Well, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Now I just balled these up myself. I actually balled these up in the car over my knees. Um, it was semi-cathartic balling wool. Um, over my knees in the car. It was only when it tangled towards the end that it got a little bit frustrating. But um, the idea of getting, oh, what do they call it? Um, a swift and a baller. Uh, yeah, they're expensive. And I don't know, my mum-in-law actually has spun but I don't know if she's got a swift and I don't know that there's any point in asking himself because he wouldn't have a clue what the hell it might be she's got a loom in the upstairs kind of uh, I don't know what you'd call it kind of an office -y space she hasn't touched it for years um, and she certainly won't be touching it because she's had the stroke. But, and I have said to him, if he's going to get rid of it, I would love it. I don't know where the fuck I put it. It's, it's, it's not small. It's the size of the bench, maybe. Um, length, width-wise or whatever, a little bit deeper. I it would need to have a craft space downstairs for it. But I would still hate to lose it um, for the cost that it would take to replace. And because I'm getting into all of these yarns, I would love to have the opportunity to um, to do some looming again. Um, I did do it as a kid. We had a loom when I was a kid, um, and um, it was uh, maybe A1 size, not ginormous. Um, 
my dad let me um, do some looming on it ages ago and we had a teacher we I'm getting criticized for using we I'll talk to you maybe about that um, but I had a teacher in high school who in art class so grades um, seven eight nine maybe ten and they did weaving with us and I remember weaving um, onions I think was the image that I did and other than me pulling it in too tight and it ended up leaning in at the edge I loved it um, but we actually made a picture with it so we even you know I think one of the bits of it uh, I don't know if, if I've still got it if I do it's you know somewhere downstairs and all the old stuff but there was a line where it was vertical and I didn't interlock the the weaves and so therefore it's got a, a line separating it instead of having that you know interlock so little things like that I've kind of picked up on um so yeah that was about making a picture with weaving um and it was that one was only I uh, like it was smaller than an A4 sheet um but loved that we actually had trying to think no no I had a pretty good art teacher in college too um, I left the uh, all-girls school in grade 11 so second last year um, I missed being in the co-ed school to be honest and um, I left uh, stayed home actually for a couple of months got told to get out and get a job and then went back to college with a school that did things like engineering and art and um, much more physical subjects which is what I was into rather than academics not that I wasn't able to do the academics I just preferred the hands-on kind of things and the art teacher there was pretty good and I think I did um, pastel work in college um, with oil pastels um, and I did a gorgeous uh, flower basket you know the flat flower baskets that you can get where the flowers basically you cut them and you lie them down and you know they don't bend or anything so I did a pastel of um, one of those flat baskets full of flowers and it's just a riot of colour again I don't know if I've still got it um, but I was really proud of that um, painting and I did um, other technical subjects so I did tech drawing and engineering well it's actually engineering drawing um, and I did metal work in my engineering rather than woodwork so yeah I really enjoyed that there was no sexism um, the girls could do the engineering subjects just as easily as the boys um, and we all had I think I had a lab coat I know I had a pair of dungarees overalls I had a pair of overalls like all of us had um, yeah I enjoyed that college it was a bit it, it was quite rough and tumble you're talking um, later teens so the the barneying between the teenagers you know was there the boys and the girls kind of thing I don't remember so much dating when I was there either um, others might have dated I know I didn't maybe they were just oops not my kind of type of boy I don't know <laughs> uh, ooh, dropping dropping joys of, of teenagehood um, it's still so hot oh my god and I, yeah and this, the sun is actually going to be on me now for a little bit so I probably need to move or I'll have one 
you know, trucky arm and the other one will be um, fine. And I will burn after about 15 minutes. So, yeah, tazzy sun. But I will swing you around. I will show you what the day is like. The clouds that are up there are not moving terribly fast. Uh, they're big and fluffy and nothing in them. They're just white, fluffy clouds. The wind has died down. It was windy yesterday. Um, it's just it's just gorgeous. There's a light breeze. Um, it is just a beautiful, beautiful day. I don't know if... I don't know if I'm going to have time. Um, I've got to get videos edited. The problem with doing uh, this, oh, I could upload straight to YouTube, I suppose, um, and then try and have it not quite as heavily edited in the beginning. Uh, yeah, I, I'll see how I go. I might just use PowerDirector today um, and just do it from my phone. But, um, yeah, and then do the rest of the tweaks when it's up. Let's see how it goes with that. Um, yeah, so uh, it's been mm, three quarters of an hour. I've got photos to show you of the walk, so what I might do is take you into the computer and add that clip. If I do that thinking, thinking, editing, thinking, and excuse the vacuum. She's taken an hour to vacuum the house, and there's going to be so much still missed. It's a joke. Um, Marriage counseling tomorrow. That will be interesting. I need an intervention. I think Sophie is down watching him doing the car washing. We um, got the car all dusty yesterday because of the gravel road, so he's just washing all that off. Um, I'm so glad he's finding the car a pleasure to drive, though. Although he has hurt what he, what he calls his right neck um, and shoulder, so he's feeling a little bit sore in that respect. Okay, so the next colour, as I started off with, folks, massive colour change going from oops, the blue to the red. But, uh, and this is this is the, the the one thing that I didn't like about this pattern is that um, you don't get a chance to see what each of the sections look like beforehand. Um, so when I first did this I did it wrong because I was keeping the yarn on whatever side that it wasn't supposed to be on on every second I needed to move the yarn behind so that those strings could come to the fore basically um, so I didn't know what it was meant to look like so I was making the mistakes and then I was seeing some pictures and it was like oh yeah right I remember it's supposed to look like that. How is it, you know, and trying to work it out in my head. Um, I have had Rachel thankfully say, you know, if I need any help to um, yell because she's ahead of me on hers. I'm not actually not sure if she brought it to Ireland with her. Um, if she's continued on, um, let me know, Rach. Um, but yeah, when I first did this 
section, those lines were kind of getting brought backwards and forwards and yeah, so you couldn't actually see those slips. So now I've got the slips and hopefully now I've got the where it comes forward because I wasn't I was doing a knit stitch. Oops. I was doing a knit stitch instead of doing a knit row and then a purl row. So again, fixed up that. Uh, yeah, have a dunderhead. We'll get there. I'm sorry. I told you I would show you the view. There it is, and you're going to get it wobbly because I'm not on the gimbal. But look at that fluffy blue, fl <laughs> fluffy blue sky, fluffy white clouds in gorgeous blue sky, and I'll show you down the bottom corner. Isn't that a gorgeous day? Like minimal breeze. Oops. And there's the mountain under cloud, you know, where we didn't go. <laughs> But yeah, isn't it gorgeous? So yeah, that was my view that I got to enjoy. All right, talk to you soon. So next row is I'm gonna bring the red in. Oops, red. And um, yeah, that'll be fun. So I'm gonna stick my owls on my needles. I'll call it quits from this video. And um, they're very, very cute. Um, they're 3D printed owl needle keepers, needle minders. Um, that I use. Um, this, um, we will eventually get in store on Etsy. Yeah. Um, we're now debating buying a 3D printer for me for my what I want printed. So uh, that would be really really cool. And it means then that I can kind of say, hey, I've got this, and yes, you can buy it in the store and show prototypes. That's my aim, and we make to order then because it doesn't take long for the owls to print. Some of the more complicated prints, um, I would probably have a couple in stock and sell from stock rather than print to order, we'll see. Um, but that would be the, the long-term aim. Um, yeah, see how we go. All right, I will jump you over to the other video and I'll probably wrap this up then on the computer. But if I don't, just in case I don't, please um, subscribe. Um, like my video please ring the bell so that you get the notifications for the next videos that i upload and um, i will see you around on the tubes bye for now may the road rise up to meet you may the wind be always at your back may the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields and until we meet again may god hold you in the palm of his hand